Hi, my name is Anna Wynn, and I'm going to be talking about how the use of physics is in our daily lives and how it's intertwined into your daily routine and some people don't even realize. So the um, title of my topic is Physics Everywhere and Anywhere. I just wanted to start out by talking about what exactly is physics. When physics comes to someone's mind, they mainly think acceleration, velocity, building something, um, force, kinetic energy, potential energy, which yes, it all does have to do with that, but it's even more going from sound. People don't even think sound is a part of physics, which it is. It's the study of matter and how things move through time. It's the way the world works. Um, without physics, there wouldn't really be the world we live in. Um, even a quiet, still world still is involved with physics. So physics is the way the world works, how gravity, sound, magnetism, and all mechanics intertwine to make the world how it is today. So when you look at your daily life schedule, you can see how each small step in your daily routine has some impact of physics. So I just want to talk about going throughout your daily routine, starting from when you wake up to when you go run errands or go to work, which you do throughout the day, even from coming home. Um, so you can imagine your daily schedule. The first thing someone does when they wake up is wake up. Um, and that's from an alarm clock, typically. Um, and as I was saying earlier, sound is a part of physics. So when you wake up in the morning, you immediately hear an alarm clock. There has to be some kind of work done or something in order for you to be able to hear those sounds. It doesn't just automatically, yeah, I hear that sound. There has to be something done. Um, and those are from mechanical waves. And mechanical waves is the transfer of energy through a medium. Um, so the sound is what you wake wakes you up in the morning. So like I said, that's coming from mechanical sound waves. And mechanical waves are waves that transfer energy through mediums, whether it be a short or long wave. And I heard a really good example. I saw a really good example of kind of like a slinky. You can imagine like you hit the first ring in a slinky and it keeps going throughout kind of like a wave and it goes all the way down. And it kind of um, interrupts that their equilibrium. So it continues to move and... Um, to where it reaches your ear. So it's kind of like a transfer of energy, like I said. Um, because without that, you wouldn't be able to hear. You have to have those waves to be going into your ear for you to be able to hear things. Um, and also walking. A lot of people don't even think, like, as you lift your foot from the ground, there's friction between your feet and um, the ground. So as you're walking... Um, you're releasing that friction, but also it's the movement of your feet. Um, kind of like whenever you lift your right foot and you walk forward, um, that as that foot immediately goes down, the other one goes up. It's a somewhat of a pendulum motion. Um, Which means basically as one leg moves, yes, the other instantly relax and so on with the other leg. And washing clothes. This is another big one that a lot of people don't even realize. So when even simply washing your clothes, there is a physics to how washing machine and dryers operate. In order for the two to separate the soap and water from the clothes, there is a centrifugal force that comes into play. So washing a washing machine, machine is more so a centrifuge, which is... Um, a machine that spins at a fast pace, resulting in the separation of liquids and the contents. The centrifugal force is what makes the liquid separate from the clothing. So another example would be you're running, you're sprinting down a, um, a street and you're going to suddenly make a left turn and you kind of feel that centrifugal force, which kind of makes you want to continue to go forward, but even though you're turning left, which is kind of how a washing machine works. That force is causing the liquids and the um, clothing to separate, and that's more so how, like, a washing machine works. And so every day, or if you go to work, you're going to have to go in the car and drive, and a really important thing is to use your seatbelt. And the seatbelt uses a retractor mechanism, which really does save lives, but it also has to do with inertia, which is the tendency to do nothing or remain unchanged until um, something acts upon it. So, for instance, you're driving and there's a car um, 
and it immediately hits you. That seatbelt is what saves you. But what the seatbelt is using is the retractor mechanism, which is the locking mechanism that stops the spool from rotating when there is a collision. Because um, without that seatbelt, you wouldn't be able to um, drive safely. And if someone hits you, you would immediately be spun out of the car, which is why the seatbelt is used to um, stop you from that. So the seatbelt holds you back, and this is due to the retractor mechanism, which will lock when you lean forward. The, the seatbelt detects the force being put on it, resulting on it tightening up and going in between those forces, which will more so save your life. But also, when you're driving, there are na there's the natural law of physics, where um, <clears throat> natural forces are always surrounding you when you're driving a vehicle. So starting from when you're driving, there's a brake. You brake, and you press the gas. But when you brake, the friction between the tire and the road is what causes you to stop. And this is similar to when you're walking. Like I said earlier, there's friction between your shoe and the floor. Uh, but there's also potential energy and kinetic energy. So potential energy is that an object's energy contained due to its position, whereas the kinetic energy is an object's energy due to motion. So a lot of people use the example where a ball is at the top of a slide, and as it's at the top, um, it has all this potential energy stored up which it has the ability to do, and then once it's moving down that slide, that's when it has the kinetic energy because it has the motion and the direction down the slide. Um, so this is kind of so how an engine works. Um, so that's what keeps the vehicle going, and the physical movement of the engine puts out a force which converts into kinetic energy because that potential energy stored up in that engine, and when it gets to moving, that's when it transfers to kinetic energy. And the two always... Um, go between each other so if you're um not driving there's that potential energy when it transfers to kinetic energy there's no energy loss between the two it's constantly um changing between each other another thing is cell phones um we use cell phones every day in our daily lives when we don't even realize it and in order for a cell phone to work it's um, radio frequency. It has radio frequency waves that travel through the electromagnetic spectrum. But there's also sound, which we talked about earlier, from like a ringtone or a video that you watch on your phone. Um, it works just the same way as how an alarm clock would work, or even when we talk. Um, so the way a phone communicates between one and one another is through radio frequency waves, which are found in the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, this is also another form of energy. And like I said earlier, it's similar to the alarm clock. Um, this is this kind of goes back to how I was talking about. There's so many different. Physics is such a wide spectrum of different things. It's not just movement. It's also even though sound does have to do with the movement, people just associate movement with walking or driving. But it even goes down to you using your laptop with Wi-Fi or um, even like I just said, your cell phone. And then there's also camera lenses, which uses optics, and camera lenses have a certain way to operate to take that picture-perfect photo. So we all know once, whenever you click the, um, the button to take a photo, it, it immediately does that shutter speed. So once hit, light hits the glass, which is the lens, um, the light is bent and it um, retracts, which results in a quick shutter of the camera. Um, and this is a great example to how um, the mechanical portion of the camera opens up, which allows light to hit the sensor, which re will result in a pixel image. And this is, can also relate to how different lenses allow different optics of vision, which means that one lens can have a wide image of its subject, whereas another lens could be much more con condensed and not allow much space around the subject. And then lastly, there's cooking. And this has so many different aspects to it, too, because there's thermo thermodynamics, which is um, a person doing work as well as heat. And this heat will travel from the hot stove to the food, which then allows the food to cook. Um, and thermod thermodynamics is simply the relationship between heat and all other forms of energy, all other forms being mechanical, um, chemical, all those different forms. And we're using that heat to cook. And then there's also the... The, um, the motion of cutting a, a vegetable or a fruit, you need that sharp knife, which when you exert the force, it easily cuts the foods. Whereas if you have a thick bladed knife, it would be much more difficult because there's more friction between the two. Um, so that's how whenever you're cutting food, you always need that sharper blade so there's less friction and it's easier because it causes less force to be put in, which results in less work for you. And this all comes around to 
Um, I saw this quote in The Importance of Physics. Um, it said, the cooking process is an open system because in both matter and energy is lost because you're using the heat um, to cook the food and all that. And so I just want to talk about how physics is everywhere. Um, the way physics is intertwined into the routine we do every day, it explains how things overall work and come into play. So when you simply just look at your everyday life and your daily routine throughout the day, there's numerous ways in different aspects of physics that are taken into play. And it's really important to notice these things and to be able to apply to how they're connected with one another. And if we didn't have the basic concepts of physics, it would be hard to drive a car safely. Um, you need to be able to be able to turn. You can't just drive in a straight line forever. And all these different things kind of explain how the world works. It's already there. It's not, this isn't something that's man-made. This is how the world works. Um, and it's really important. So it's just um, important to know that physics plays such a large role in our life. And it makes things much easier to appreciate the different screws and bolts that do come together and form a smooth working machine which is our everyday lives. So next, so now due to this project, I've really been able to look at everything I do from whenever I make coffee in the morning to walking to bed to driving to school. It's easy to see how these things connect and to really appreciate it. Thank you.